Welcome to SpaceCast. I'm Josh, and today we're going to be talking to, about something a little bit different. SpaceCast, we talk about space events and things, but we also talk about aerospace and defense. So yesterday there was an incident in Iran. They shot down a unmanned vehicle. And so we have some guests in here to talk about this and show a notional simulation. So welcome, guys. I've got Tom Neely, who is the head developer of our Aviator product, and Jeff Baxter, who leads up our field engineers and our tech support and everything. So Jeff put together a quick simulation. Uh, welcome, guys. Thanks for coming on to talk about this. Yep. Thanks, Thanks for having us. And Jeff, um, you did this pretty quickly. And like I said, this is totally notional uh, data that you have. But can you walk us through some of the simulation that you did uh, for everybody to see. Yes, absolutely. And uh, this is certainly a serious situation. This is not an authoritative model by any means, but just based on some news articles I found online, I put together some preliminary information that shows a recreation and a simulation of what may have uh, transpired. So what we're showing here is in our software, STK, it's used for many types of applications, uh, both commercial uh, and for defense. And so in this case, what we're using, what we're showing is how to model this type of system. And in this case, we put in a global hawk flying in around the Strait of Hormuz here. And we've got some notional Iranian air defense systems displayed in this region. Uh, a few other things that we have modeled in this scenario is this white region, which is 12 nautical miles off the coast, which represents where the international waters would be. So let's go ahead and zoom in on the Global Hawk here. Uh, well, you can see we've got the aircraft modeled. It is now approaching the area where it was shot down. Uh, I wanted to clarify that we are not providing the actual information of the location of this aircraft. We are depicting a notional representation based on a route that we clicked out, purely notional. And as you can see, we're depicting that aircraft here in inside of international territory over international airspace. Jeff, Again, can you show what the, um, what the white shadow underneath the Global Hawk is? Yes, this is a notional sensor field of view of the, the payload on board the Global Hawk. So what he could be looking at Correct. from that distance. Gotcha. Yeah. It's very interesting um, you know, to think about the geometry here where uh, you know, we're showing this, the sensor field of view of the Global Hawk there, that little hatchet diagram. And then we also have the circles that represent the Iranian air defense systems. The fields of view of both of those constructs can can look into or can peer into the territory of, of Iran or Iran can see the Global Hawk if it's flying in international airspace. So that's one of the reasons why you know the military services like sensors with very long ranges. So uh, you know in the Global Hawk especially uh, Global Hawk can fly at a high altitude, which means the terrain, the, uh, the, the the horizon at which it can see is a long ways off. So with a sensor, it can look a very long ways. So the Global Hawk can easily stay in international territory, airspace, and look into Iran. I just wanted to make that uh, clear. So as we get closer, we can see that we are about to enter the uh, radar field of view of Iran, still again in international airspace. And as we get closer, you'll see the Iranian air defense system has detected our aircraft now that it's in range. And at that point, it launches a missile and that missile will then fly out and uh, take out the Global Hawk as it is flying. So a few things to highlight, the way that we model this is just based again on open information. None of this is uh, actually authoritative data. We have a, a catalog of aircraft that you can uh, bring in from a, our standard object database, all based on open information, general specifications of how different aircraft and other systems uh, behave. And so what we did is we used that to import a representative Global Hawk aircraft and then we clicked out a few waypoints along the uh, Iranian border that this aircraft may have been flying. So from here, you can see that the aircraft is now flying. It's getting closer to the enemy air defense system. The blue ring around this shows the t impacts of the surrounding terrain where this Iranian radar system would notionally be located. If I, if I could, Jeff, uh, that blue line represents a projection 
from the spot from the site of the radar to the altitude at which the global hawk is flying so if the global hawk is inside that circle it is within the line of sight of that radar system correct yes and you can see right now we're outside of that uh, radar field of view at this point and as we go around this area you'll see it approach that and it also has to be if the the global hawk was flying under this region for example it would be blocked by line of sight and the radar would not be able to see it so here what we're going to show is we're going to go a little bit uh, closer to the timeline where the rq4 gets closer to our field of view of the radar system you can see at this point the radar system has begun to track our aircraft and you see it launching a missile at our aircraft as well change the viewpoint here and uh, there's many ways that you can model this uh, fly out of this missile in this case again very notional data of this uh, uh, Syed 3 uh, potential system right here and as we uh, move this forward you'll see that the the missile then uh, takes out our system at this uh, particular time So that's a very quick recreation of the scenario that we put together, again, based on notional open information. Thanks, uh, Chip. Very serious scenario. We uh, hope for a speedy recovery of, the, uh, uh, of, our, of the, the system, as well as a uh, quick resolution to this issue. Yeah, thanks, Jeff. Thanks for walking us through that. Tom, I didn't mention earlier, Tom has a lot of operational experience in the Navy. Did you have anything else you wanted to add uh, about the scenario or the incident itself. And all the stuff that Jeff is showing is available if you want to use it um, to tell a story or tell this story uh, in other places. Just contact media at agi.com, and we'll have some other stuff uh, shortly available for you as well. Tom, I uh, asked you a question and then didn't let you talk. Sorry. Uh, well, I'd Go like ahead. to stress, uh, uh, thanks. I'd like to stress that uh, the way SDK works, we're, we're not necessarily uh, driven by the exact precise properties of the of the vehicles that are involved one of the nice things about sdk is you can put in whatever data that you would like to put in uh, very easily and then generate representative flight paths and trajectories and things of that sort and that's exactly what we did here i just want to stress that none of this is official data what we did is we used hypothetical representations just based on getting close not even using our best guesses because um, i have some pretty good best guesses sure. um, so we have you know, a tool that can represent uh, with pretty high fidelity given the physics, if you give it the right data, it will generate trajectories that are highly representative. Um, again, I'm going to stress that this is hypothetical data. The trajectories we're showing you are, are physics based. Um, and in the case of this SIAD 3 missile, I did some research on it quickly before I came up here. And uh, that weapon has a as a range officially of around 100 kilometers or maybe 150 kilometers. Um, and when you... So when you can zoom out for a second, Jeff, take that into account. Can you show about what the range of that missile would be, what Tom just said? Yeah, well, when I looked at it on the, when, when the trajectory got constructed, it was about 75 nautical miles, okay. which, would, which would correspond to that kind of a range. So, um, you know, we, we put in hypothetical numbers very and what turns out is when you put in these hypothetical numbers you can get into the ballpark right is what i'm trying to say here um so what jeff is showing is reasonably realistic yes it's highly it's it's yeah. a, it's what i'm what i'm trying to say is it's a great tool that mm -hmm. that it, when you give it i mean if you give it crazy data you're going to get crazy answers but when you put in data that you know you can get very high fidelity answers out of the tool Thank you, Jeff. Do you want to flip back over to the thing? I think that that view that you had there a little bit further out uh, showing the ranges of the radars and their you know, the terrain blocking them and the range of the missile being taken into account, that gives a pretty good visual driven by real analytic numbers of like what actually happened there. So thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Tom. Thanks for coming on. If you guys don't have anything to add, we're going to uh, call it a day. All right. All right. Thanks. Thanks. And as we leave you, we're going to show a bunch of uh, clips that you can use if you're in the media. Please contact media at agi.com if you'd like to use any of these clips that we're showing of 
other notional simulations clips that you can use if you'd like to uh, repurpose them into something else, just please contact media at agi.com.